um, script uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 18. This meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee is being conducted via remote participation. This meeting is being recorded at the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Um, I don't, oh, you just say, okay, I see the recording light is on. <clears throat> Anybody dialing in by phone can press star nine to raise their hand to be recognized. People with video can click on the raise hand button at the bottom of their screen. Otherwise, I'll watch for real hands and gestures to recognize you. That's, that's my style. Uh, muting when you're not speaking is recommended. Um, I. That's in the script. I read that even though we've all been very good about um, not having background noise better than we've been about talking before we unmute. So I, I think it's fine if you are, aren't crazy about muting every time. Um, oh, and that's it. That is all that I have to say to uh, open up the meeting. Um, the uh, a couple of announcements, and, and I was hoping, well, when, when Tracy comes and, and catches up with us a little bit later, I, I, I'm expecting her to join us. Um, she went to a uh, Mass DOT uh, moving together. I think you all saw the, hi Eve, uh, hi. you all saw her, her, um, her promotion of that. Um, and she, was, she just had uh, some interesting things that she's taken from that that um, I wanted us to hear tonight. Um, I was chatting with Guilford a little bit earlier, Darcy, uh, when she sent me a, a, an email that about not being able to be with us tonight, suggested that we get our two cents worth in uh, on the budget forums um, for, uh, I guess they're forums that are happening. Um, well, one is happening right now anyway. And um, I took that sort of as a, um, not only as a suggestion, as a, as, a, as a constituent of hers, but also maybe as, as chair of a committee that might have some ideas about things that we would wanna to take to that forum. This is something we've talked about in the past and we haven't had a, a really good answer for that. Our advice often is not you know, budget directed. Um, we have suggested things like um, getting somebody uh, into the to town hall who can advocate and work on transportation issues. And Gilford is suggesting that again in a, in a slightly different form. Um, so I, th I think I'm going to uh, try to figure out how to bring that into the, into the budgeting process. Um, I'll, I'll probably exercise Darcy on that. Um, <clears throat> also, um, this is actually old news, and I, I can't remember if I brought it to the, uh, the committee, but our work on the Route 9 Northampton Road uh, repaving and rejiggering, it's, it's not strictly repaving, but it is uh, some improvements as well. Um, we um, had a, a bunch of ideas that we put in uh, to them during the, uh, during the design process at 50%. And I had a chance to look at, and I don't know if we're all interested in it, but I had a chance to look at the draft 100% drawings and all that stuff is in there. So that was, that was uh, I wanted to say that out loud so Darcy could hear it and uh, know that, you know, we do things. There's, there's stuff, important stuff that gets done here. Um, so Eve, do, do you know uh, if Tracy, is, is Tracy there or is Tracy, do you know what her? She texted. Oh, she says she's joining as public and then asked to be admitted. So we need to bring her into the panel. Oh, when we see her. Okay, so I'm gonna, huh, okay. So she's not showing up yet. Well, I don't know, uh, I could also email her the link. Would that work? Yeah, well, she got it. She did get it. I know Amber sent it to her. Uh, yeah, she's been having some problems, but she hasn't contacted me or anything yet, saying it hasn't let her in, and she's not in the attendees panel. So yeah, no, I, I see that. So, yeah. um, so um, 
Yeah, she has a oh, couple there of she is. She has a couple of different email addresses. Oh, there you are, Trace. Oh, she's still muted. Sorry. Hi, Tracy. Not at all. Hi, <laughs> no, I, I couldn't, you've been I couldn't a busy find day. the link. I'm sorry, oh. I couldn't find the link. Um, yeah, I use my UMass email address with stuff with the town because somehow a lot of town emails to my home address never get to me. I don't know why that is. So, so which UMass address is that? It's just uh, tzafian at umass.edu. Okay, not not okay. Uh, any of the other ones, they all like resolve to the same thing. I'm not trying to have like ten emails. Or... <laughs> And, it, and it's okay to send stuff to UMass, even though this is kind of, well, maybe it's not really political, so, all right. Well, I mean, I am sensitive to that. I just have never been able to fix that Amher, the, the issue with the Amherst emails. Like if Guilford was to email me, I would never get it, but it would never bounce to Guilford or so, I don't yeah. know. And, and yet I send it to your personal address and stuff comes. Yeah, goes. it's just something with the town and I don't know. All right. So um, I'm just getting to the spot in the uh, the agenda when I wanted. I was wondering if you had something to to uh, tell us about the uh, moving together from Mass DOT. Oh, it yeah. sounds, like, sounds like a fun it three days for anybody who's a traffic nerd. Anyway. Well, and I mean, so moving together, the focus of it is um, you know bicycles, pedestrians, transit, accessibility, safety. It's not as cars as much. I mean, there is stuff on signals and things. Um, it was a good conference. We had uh, 1,300 attendees. We had 36 sessions. Um, one of the things I really liked was that um, we had, there were a lot of, I mean, one thing nice about doing a virtual conference is you get to have participants not only from um, Massachusetts, but also from other states. Um, so we had people from like oh, seven DOTs. We had people internationally call in. Um, we had some great keynote speakers and everybody gets to just sit at their computer, but, um, but it was good. And, um, yeah, I mean, the secretary of transportation, she focuses, she's been talking for a few years about transportation and equity. So she was part of a number of sessions on that. Um, I was, I assisted a session, a really great session on transit post COVID and how to keep transit going. And that was really those are really important, timely topics. And um, yeah, and so actually, so um, Ben, um, who's one of the Amherst planners, I guess he was hired in what, February? Chris Chris would know. And um, I had never met him before. Uh, Chris, you're muted. Ben was hired in February, but he didn't start until June full time because he was in grad school. Okay, so, yeah. so Ben, um, he presented on the first day about the shared streets um, money that uh, Amherst got from Mass DOT, and um, the Montague planner also presented that day, and um, it was a really slick video um, about the project. And uh, I'm hoping to share those as soon as possible. So, um, yeah, it was great. What would the mechanism be for for sharing that? Just sending a, a well. So the videos, those two videos are going to go back to the towns. Um, we're just doing some processing on them, like adding the Mass DOT logo and things like that. Um, but those will be released pretty soon. Um, in terms of all the conference sessions, those will all be released. Uh, but we're adding closed captioning to all of them, which takes some time. Um, just for accessibility, particularly if they're going to be posted on the Mass DOT website, they all need to be fully accessible. So, okay. so that so will probably able... take like up to like a month or something. Okay, so that's Mass DOT. It'll be in the Mass DOT. Website. Right, but the Amherst video will be much sooner, I think. So, um, yeah. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I. I don't know. Did any of you guys? I mean, I sent around that little promo. Did any of you tune into any of it? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to ask a question, if I may. Please, Bruce. Uh, Tracy. Uh, is the shared streets, is that a particular, is that going toward a particular project in Amherst? You said we'd gotten a shared streets grant from the state? It was a downtown grant. I mean, Chris would probably be able to speak more to it, but it, it was um, COVID related funding. Oh. It's related mostly to outdoor dining, but it involved um, eliminating one turning lane on North Pleasant Street going south to Amity Street and um, widening the traveled way there so that we could have a bike path as well as um, outdoor dining. 
and South Pleasant Street was also adjusted. Um, the MassDOT grant paid for a number of things, including a couple of new bus shelters. I think there are three altogether. Um, it paid for numerous um, heaters, outdoor heaters to allow outdoor dining to go go ahead this fall. And then we have some in storage that we're gonna bring out next spring. Um, it's gonna pay for planters and uh, just a, a number of different things related to um, adjusting the street to allow outdoor dining, but at the same time allowing or keeping the bike uh, lane and um, making sure that it's safe for pedestrians. So I think we got, what did we get Guilford? 129,000 or something like that. I think that's what we got. And we're, um, we're going to apply for another one, I think. Um, the, that round is coming up starting in December. December 4th is the first um, due date. So we have to figure out what to apply for for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that's, that's thank you. Um, and along those lines, sort of, sort of questions, I've got one for Guilford as well that I, I've just put on my notes here under, under announcements. The, um, we, we've noticed the automatic speed limit signs, the speed registering speed limit signs. I guess there are two that I know of. I don't know if there are more, uh, one on South Pleasant Street and one on Amity and uh, South, uh, Southeast Street. It, it, where is it? Where's the other one, Tracy? There's oh, um, one on the UMass campus. Um, and there's also, I mean, I'm one. And there's not also, ours. No, I know. Uh, and there's also one um, on North Pleasant Street through campus. Is that one yours? Is that part of North Pleasant Street? There's two on the UMass campus then. North of um, like North Amherst, there's one on North Pleasant Street. Yeah, there's one on North Pleasant Street in the vicinity of Village. Um, right. Uh, um, Village no, Park. Is North Village. North, North Village, Village. Right. There's one on Amity Street and there's one on um, South East Street. Way so down the, at the and on Amity, Street. right? So the, the two that are ours anyway, and I, I, I don't know uh, who might speak to the two that are th from the, the university. Um, is there any anything going to be done to uh, test their efficacy? I mean, they're, they're pretty and they, they're, they're going to startle people for a while. And then is it just going to become like a, a how do we know that it's not going to become just like another uh, another a speed limit sign which gets ignored when we're in a hurry to get to work in the morning. If you believe uh, if you believe all the all the studies that have been done by transportation people, it will be ignored. Um, it will become white noise at some point. The issue um, the the issue came up as the police department got a grant for some of these signs, and that's where they came from. Um, the police department are going to actually the three we own, which are one on North Pleasant one on Amity, one on Southeast Street. The police are going to actually calibrate them so they can actually use them for enforcement. So um, you can't do remote enforcement from it, but as long as there's a police officer sitting there and can see the sign and see the car and match the two together, they can write tickets. So and, and that, that boosts their efficacy, I imagine, then, you know, that Sometimes there'll be a cop hiding behind the billboard right beyond it, and sometimes not. I, uh, if the planning board would approve billboards in Amherst, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, Marcus, I have to oh, get the mark. Oh, sorry. I was just, just a quick thing. I thought they were meant to stop flashing when you went the speed limit. Um, these belong so to the one of them that I've driven by, at, actually below the speed limit, and it's still flashing at me. So they belong to the police department. And they program them, and they program the way they wish to program them. Yeah. Mm. I have ridden as fast as I can my bicycle towards it, and I can't get it to flash, no matter wow. what I do. The so. an, the Amity Crazy. one flashes below speed limit, but it's like close to it, and it says slow down and things. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, there actually have been a number of studies that show that they are effective too. So um, I may be reading different journals yeah, than long term but, though. I mean, that's the thing is the long term. Um, the yeah, I mean, even within a few years, they're still shown to be effective. I guess, particularly, I think if it's paired with enforcement, but yeah, I, I mean, and, and also, I mean, like on Amity, people, I mean, I live off of Amity, and people are not aware of how fast they go down the hill. <coughs> so, I think you know, it can be a wake up call just mm -hmm. to realize that you're going 
like 40 or 50 miles an hour, just you're going downhill. There's no speed limit signs there or anything. So I, I think that that can, can, I mean, nobody wants to be speeding intentionally. So. And every four years we have a new population anyway. Well, so. Right, and so, so it'll be new and exciting for them. Yeah. Um, so who do we speak to in the police department if we're interested in getting more data on those in the future? Just out of curiosity, who's, uh, who's in charge of that? The chief? What, I mean, what data do you want to get out of it? Well, I'm just, 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 uh, you know, I'm playing, playing transportation nerd and I'm kind of curious as to how well, and, and, and you know, whether, whether in our case, um, they're working. The actual, the machines actually overwrite them, overwrite what they store. So if they do any type of data collection, it's pretty much overwritten almost by the end of the day. So there's no, uh -huh. You'd have, we'd have to go in and probably change it a little bit, but I don't think they're actually set up or can be set up right now to actually store data and take it after a long period of time. So those are like literally digital stop signs or speed limit signs. Yeah, yes. that, yeah, well, that, that's that's kind of too bad because I mean, they're, they, they're nice and they look like they work and, and, and they're, um, but as so many things in the past that have looked great and like they would work, maybe they won't um, and you know, if they do work, we'll want more. And if they don't work, well, it was a good try. Well, with having living on Southeast Street, anything, anything will help. Yeah, yeah, um, yes, yeah. like sidewalks along the entire length. Oh, oh, that's right. a different. Well, you, you know, I, the grandkids are not allowed in the front yard for, you know, a reason. Um, yeah. Did anybody mention the MassWorks grant yet? That I saw WWLP had a story on it. Uh, for West to... Street and Pomeroy intersection. I was about to mention it. I had my hand up. Oh, Chris. <laughs> really oh, yes, you, you do. You do. <laughs> I, I see your hand over there. I'm sorry. So the town applied for a MassWorks grant, the planning department and the DPW together. And um, it's really exciting. And we got a, a $1.5 million to redo the intersection at Pomeroy Lane in 116. Um, $1.5 million is not a lot of money considering how much work needs to be done there. So Guilford's gonna work his magic and try to get a plan together for that much money. Um, but we're really excited that something's finally gonna happen because I started working with Jason Skills on this project something like 2004, 2005. And we came up with a good plan that the design review board that Guilford isn't too fond of, but anyway, Jason and um, the design review board and I came up with a plan for that intersection way back then. And we did try for a MassWorks grant in 2013 and didn't get it. So we finally got in it now and we just have to figure out how to make the project work within the budget. And it's a really good, good thing. And we were all there to hear the governor and the lieutenant governor. And I'm not sure who Mr. Keneally is, but um, he was there too and he announced the awards. So, nice. Are we going to put a roundabout in there? Yes, Guilford. <laughs> Bruce? I was just going to ask the same question. <laughs> so we're in this um, we're, we're in this dilemma of what to actually put there. They actually, I don't know, they gave us the grant, but we didn't really tell them what we're going to build. So I think the <laughs> first part of the grant is engineering, right, Chris? And then we have a construction phase. Mm -hmm. So we need to desi design and decide on the design, and then we can build next the next year mm -hmm. roundabout sounds good yeah yeah roundabout would you know, might might not might be difficult to fit that so uh guilford or, or chris how how much of the old cdbg plan um might be implemented or, or pulled into that because there was a a full-blown accessibility it was it was an accessibility improvement to that intersection which did spill over a little bit and describe other other components of it. Uh, will that be pulled in at all? Or are we starting from scratch? I'm not sure what you're referring to, but there is going to be a lot of work um, related to making that intersection accessible because right now it doesn't have curb ramps down from the sidewalks and in some places it doesn't even have sidewalks. So um, much of it is going to be about accessibility and getting people through that intersection on foot and on bicycle and in cars. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that there's been some work done on that in the past. I, I would be hard pressed to say where those plans came from and where they might be, if I could find them at all. But it involved um, 
accessibility mostly on the uh, northeast corner. <clears throat> cool. Um, so, so when is that work to design going to start? It's probably in the next few months. I don't know when we get the money. Um, it, it was just announced today, so I don't know how quickly they turn around and, and give us some money. But Guilford and his team are going to do the engineering, and um, so I don't know what what the plan is to to get started there. And there's probably going to be some public process, and um, yeah, so everybody's going to have their say about it. Um, but it is great that we're finally doing something there. So if Guilford is doing it, that means it'll be a roundabout for sure. Okay. Well, Which I was just going to say, I would strongly recommend that everybody Googles mini roundabout um, because that would certainly fit in that space and is a widely used alternative to traffic lights everywhere else in the world. Yeah, and we, we, we already know of um, some problems near there that a roundabout might help resolve with slowing the, sort of giving the traffic an idea as they're heading south that um, they shouldn't open up their their uh, their jets until maybe past pot wine. Well, that, yeah, that's a, I, so I noticed the other day, that's kind of actually leads to another good conversation. Um, I'm kind of curious why the speed limit down by Hampshire College is 50 miles an hour, yet Northeast Street is 40. Probably mostly because it can be. Well, yeah. I was hoping that Northeast Street would be 52, but anyway, that's a different. No, I mean that. I, 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 that's a speed limits are a little bit magical and have to do with how much you know how fast people want to travel in that particular road. But when you've got a mile landing strip, which is you know 60 feet wide, um, I'm sort of surprised that people only go 50 on it. They keep oh, the speed limit, so. Yeah, so so by the way, Marcus, I just, just uh, before we go on to much further, I, I I appreciate you being at the Four Seasons. This is a very, a storied, a storied location. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, going to be a national monument soon, so. Aaron, are you able to see me? Because I've been, I yeah. raised. I, I, I had, yeah, but I see, I look at the people who are talking and not the people who are not talking. Eve. <laughs> Um, so just very briefly, just a reminder that we um, that that intersection was part of one of the subcommittee walks, and um, I just am particularly appreciative of our um, the member of that subcommittee at that time who was a PBTA driver. He had a lot of um, insights about um, sort of bus access and safety. So I would recommend referencing that briefly. I think those subcommittee reports I've seen them like they're still on the website, but not on the TAC page. That there are somewhere else. Yeah, so, so cause there was another document missing also we spoke about, I believe at the October meeting and someone went in and edited the website in July um, that doesn't normally edit it. So I have to go in and do some recovery work on it and find those documents again, honestly. No, but Amber, they're on a different page. Like I pulled them up somewhere different. I, I can send you a link when I yeah that's odd so yeah let me know and I'll recover them okay thank you that's uh I'm a little surprised but but I guess during COVID when you're all locked down and having plenty of time to fuss with things maybe something gets too tidied up um, hearings if any we don't have any um, I was hoping tonight to um, to uh, reheat and get going and get going to the, to the and push across the finish line our bicycle and pedestrian plan. Um, one of the things that that Guilford may not have had time to do during the course of the week, even though I've been pestering him, um, is is get that so that we can pull it up and take a look at it. Um, no, um, I have it, I have it here. Um, I don't know, do I wanna, yes, Eve. Yeah, I'm not even sure that we ever saw the revision after um, 
after the PVPC did the final revision, and I know we never got the map. Well, yes, and, and what I what I have to um, to uh, to show. I mean, I, I have the whole thing, and uh, maybe part of our homework in getting it going again is to to look over it quickly, which which I've done now. Um, and um, you're right. There's some edits that haven't gone in. Uh, I have the copy of those two long lists of things that we wanted to see fixed. Um, so I don't know where all of that is in the final draft. Uh, I, I, I think it's there, but I don't know um, if it ever got published and sent back to us. I know there's a couple of hours left um, um, to, to do for, for them to, to, to finish, the BVPA to finish. Um, so, so Guilford or, or, or Chris, maybe Chris, uh, where, where is that? Where are those? I thought the text was finished, um, but I can ask Maureen. I can uh, confirm that with her. She's the person who. Um, right. <clears throat> and um, and all, also in, um, in working on this, um, we have our uh, cover sheet. Ah, where is it? That um, uh, even I worked on. Uh, just a letter describing. Um, did I work on it, Aaron? I said I would, but I think you would. Yeah, you 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 did finally send send a letter, <laughs> and I did I did I did pull in this stuff. I, I um, yeah I, I know that was that was a pretty hard time for a lot of reasons, um, and um, I haven't sent that around. But so so what's left to do? Just just um, I I know there's some some among us who haven't. Uh, been up to their elbows in it for months and months and months the way the rest of us have. Um, the um, basically uh, PVPA put together um, did did a lot of research about our existing pedestrian and bicycle networks in town and put together a nice little report. Which is I, is it on the website? Yes, the draft is on the website. Okay. Who's the, um, who's the website, though I don't know. For us to look at it, and I think pretty much everything is done, uh, which is to say, you know, the research, the, the the status, the way things were two years ago are understood and and described in the report. Um, and what's left? There's two big things that are left. One is to finish the the wishful thinking maps, um, where um, at this point, um, there is a description of what the final or what a an ultimate um, network of, of bicycling and pedestrian ways might be through town. Um, it's a it's a it's a dark blue. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'll see. I guess if I do this, maybe maybe it pops up. I'm still learning this now myself. Um, so um, the uh, we have um, um, this map. Uh, with, this is the cover. This is the the front page of the report, and the dark blue lines show where. Um, um, uh, where we want the routes to go ultimately. The, what have I done? I've broken something here. <laughs> and um, we plan, we hope to sit together and finish the, making those blue lines. There, there, there are some gaps in them that are not right. Um, there are, you know, just, just problems with it. Um, and it, that's got to be tidied up. And so that has to happen. And then next, I wanted to talk about how we might want to publish it ultimately. Um, I don't know if it's enough. I'm, I'm certainly not happy with just uh, putting on the website where people might stumble across it, but rather um, have some other event. And I don't know what the right event would be um, to, to sort of finalize it 
and maybe get some last minute input. Um, <clears throat> so I will send it around as a, as a, a something separate so you don't have to go poking around on the website. But in the meantime, I'm wondering what we think. Bruce. Should there be a public hearing and discuss it if uh, there's public input before it's finalized? What do you think? I, th I think that would make sense. Um, and, the, the, um, and, and I want to point out, of course, it's not a hearing because we don't do those. It's a, it's a something else, a listening, a, a listening a session. charrette or a presentation. Presentation um, sounds good. The, um, especially since um, I don't know that I would want there to be much editing, much more input coming to it. Um, Cause I think we've done a good job. I think we're basically finished except for the, the final, final, um, boy, would I love to have a meeting in person and just put this piece of paper in between us on the table like we did before and put crayons on it. Um, actually, Guilford, how, now that I've said it, how, how are we going to do this? How are we going to make that final edit? Uh, public input? No, no, just, just our finishing the, um, the, the charcoal drawings. Um, I think we just need to mark it up and then we can have someone in here make the actual changes. Would we mark up a PDF or would we mark up a... Um, I mean, I... well, do you, do you want, does, does anybody have the ability to mark it online and then send it back or? Yeah, we could, I, yes. <laughs> so, so, but basically it'll be a share screen and you, you'd share the, um, you'd share the application, which would be Adobe Acrobat or something. And draw the lines. Okay, um, I think that that's a good idea. I like that. Um, and so, what kind of public presentation would we would we want? Um, you know, in this this time of, it's, it's, I'm realizing I hadn't thought about how complicated this question is because of our current situation. Um, but maybe there's experience. Chris Guilford with uh, rolling stuff out publicly and, you know, using the tools of, of Zoom or whatever we've got. It'd just be a big Zoom meeting, right? That, that, that are effective. Oh, I mean, you could do, you could do like breakout groups or something. If that's, you know, if you wanted people to work on th things individually and then bring it back to the group. But I think, you know, if you're trying, are you talking about like, is that what you're referring to? Uh, two, two, two separate things. One is um, our sitting around the virtual table and using your magic markers to mark up a PDF to finish the networks that we, we left undone. Um, <clears throat> and then when that gets folded into the to final draft, um, a second event would be to present it to the public somehow or other and a big public Zoom meeting, which would be maybe this meeting, except advertised a little bit more broadly. We had pretty good luck getting people to come to that public forum that we had at the bank center. There, there was a lot of interest. So I bet there would be. Yeah. You mean the one we had? The, the, yeah. Yeah. And there are lots of pictures of that in the report, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure there'd be lots of interest, but how how to engage it, and then you know what does a present presentation look like? Because we can't do the bank center again. No, no. you guys gonna have to do it on. Go, oh, Chris. Oh, I, I was gonna say Maureen could do it. I mean, she could sh show her screen and present the the um, the text, and then present the maps as well. But the maps would we'd probably want the maps to be finished before we presented them, right? <laughs> yes, of course. And that's, that's what Kim is gonna help us figure out how to finish them. Um, okay. Um, 
Aaron? Uh, Bruce. Uh, also, if, is it possible that this could be online somewhere to be read and looked at before the meeting so people can have their questions formulated? So, uh, yes, I will send it around. And I mean, for the when we get to the point of the general public, could they read it first before the meeting? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I imagined that publishing it on the website as, as the, I mean, it's there now as a draft and the update could continue to, to be there as a draft as well. And the announcement might include a pointer to it so that people know it's there because, you know, people don't always dig deeply into uh, committee websites for stuff. Well, that sounds like a good plan. Um, the, the maps aren't um, posted on the website, only the text is posted as far as I know. That... Right, so uh, a question for, for, for Guilford, I guess, is is there um, a PDF of that map that, the two maps, are, they're actually, yeah, there's, a, there's a screenshot, there's a picture of the two maps that are in the report now. I think- And I think fuzzy Maureen, and hard to read. I think Maureen got the data files, so I think we have the map. So it's just a matter of putting it together. So, all right. So, is the is the is the write up, Chris, on the planning web page? It's not on the TAC page. Might be. I found it, but I I went at a via yeah, circuitous route. But I'll look at the planning web. <laughs> okay. So, Guilford, you're thinking that Maureen got the GIS layers. I know she's got all the data. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because that's what we were needing a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, we only need the, the one, really, the, the map. Yeah, but uh, well, once, the, once uh, as I understand it, the idea was we get the, the, the draft map, then we, you know, annotate what needs to change, and then it goes back to the town GIS people with those GIS layers, and they revise it. Right. Does that um, sound right? That does sound different? right, but, but what we're going to be marking up will probably be a not a GIS because because not all of us have the the, the arc view um, but um, um, it'll be just a PDF so we can use our, our, our markup tools that you professor types use every day um, <clears throat> in your zoom meetings um, so I guess so Guilford I guess we would look for that that a, a PDF version of that map and you know if it yeah, what's in the what's in the draft report? Like I say, is pretty low resolution and hard to read, and not editable at all because the GIF, I think, as opposed to GIS. It is, it is on the transportation advisory committee webpage. The link is there. Where is it? It's I'll a, ask you later. Look down. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it doesn't it doesn't have the data file that we're interested in, uh, Guilford. Even so, isn't, isn't it only the draft, the early draft that's there? No, it's a it's a later draft. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, and I haven't looked at it to see if all of our notes are in the draft that's on the website. I kind of imagine maybe all except for the very last ones. Yeah, I think um, that's right. Are there? And um, this is dated December of 2018, and I think that's pretty much when we stopped working with um, PVPC, except that they were doing a few more edits. And I don't think we ever posted whatever they edited in the end. Yeah, I thought they, like, I thought they did edits into January or. Yeah, we were working into it. Yeah, for a while, it sort of, it sort of tapered off, but I want to want to finish it and roll it out the door. Um, okay, so that that'll be I'll put that at the top for, for next time. Um, and we'll talk about when next time is because there's some some events coming up that postpone meetings. I think the planning um, board would be interested in this. Um, you know, there are a couple of members of the planning board who joined the planning board thinking that they would have some influence over um, bicycle and pedestrian safety. And um, I think they've been disappointed that the planning board doesn't focus much on that, but they would be interested in seeing this um, plan here. So, okay. So we'll make sure that they're they're on the invitation list directly. Um, I would also imagine there's some other committees that we might want to. I, and I, I don't know what the status of of the other committees are that 
um, you know, design review board, for instance, might want to be, sorry, Guilford, um, the um, DAAC might want to be, you might want to get a separate invitation. Um, I don't know if LSSE would want one, that, that just, just because a lot of the network would be used for recreation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I expect that a lot of it would be used for recreation. I don't know if, if somebody from the school committee would be interested because I hope that these things get used to get uh, students to the schools, not having to take the bus. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like the first order of business is to get the maps done, right? Yes, yes, please. And for and, me to find and, him. So yeah, and so so really for that, if we can get the, the PDF and um, we'll try, try to figure out how to make a, a sort of a virtual table to put it on and, and crayon it, uh, crayon on it for next time. <clears throat> That'll be nice. Chris, a question for you and Maureen as you ask Maureen about the final status of it. Um, when we gave our edits, I was the one who had done the most detailed, like really line by line review, and 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 then that got incorporated into the package of edits you gave to PBPC, mm -hmm. and selection was that they just didn't have the hours to do all of the edits that we requested. And I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for us to go back in now that it's two years later and, and sort of refine some of those things. You mean us um, here in town or? Yeah, probably because we don't have any more money to pay them. I mean, we could ask. Mm -hmm. um, PVPC always comes around every year and asks if we want to work on technical assistance grants with them. So it's possible that we could grant with them to get this thing finished. What do you think so, about that? Yeah. So, well, a, a couple of thoughts. Bernie. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, BVPC uh, gets DLTA money. There's some issue as to how much is going to be uh, awarded with the new budget. But, um, you know, if there's, given that they've already put, they've already invested some time in this, it would seem like a good use for DLTA money if, if that fits with the rest of the stuff the town wants to do. Oh my gosh, can I add on to that then? No. <laughs> <laughs> Guilford says no. Because yeah. for our prioritization plan, we would really love some technical assistance from those folks. That's sort of the level that we need at this point to finish up our prioritization system. That would be a oh. great use of technical assistance. That's a, that's a thought. Yeah. Okay, well, short of all of those so, edits, we'll be <laughs> we'll be working and, on that. So, in the complete streets program, um, yes. I mean, you can qualify like with you can qualify for some assistance. I mean, we've been also working like even I have been working with the subcommittee on the prioritization plan more generally, and it does say that once you're in tier one you can apply to MassDOT for some assistance in technical assistance funding to complete your prioritization plan. So I don't know whether we could try to tap into that money or how much is available. <laughs> that was Guilford's original idea. We were trying to save him that money. <laughs> we're, actually, we're actually in the process of doing that. So stay oh, more good. But okay. what, what you're doing yeah, I mean, we're we're in the process of trying to get that grant. It's um, it's we're just in the process. It's only thirty eight thousand, and you got to remember though that. Well, let me tell you a story. The downtown money we got for the great downtown improvements that you were talking about earlier, the heaters and all that. Well, you got extra money if you were willing to put a dedicated bus lane in. Um, so that's the level of thought that Mass Highway is asking for right now. So if you ask for something from Mass Highway, they're going to want you to put in a dedicated bus, bus lane or, or they're going to want you to think at that level, which I think is not really what we were thinking at. So we have to be careful how much we, we, how much we do the Mass Highway type of thought process versus the Amherst type thought process. So, so if we're willing to put in a bus lane, even if we can't, 
and won't as a result. <laughs> Do we still get the money? You know, you, I think you really have to put it in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just to clarify, Guilford, since we were working on that prioritization plan, and I, I think we're, if we get some relatively limited uh, technical assistance, I think we could finish it up in the subcommittee. Um, but is the grant that you, because your original idea was to get a grant, to get a contractor to do the whole prioritization plan. Is that the, like, are you writing a grant now or is a grant in to basically substitute for the work that we've been doing? No, no, sorry. That, they're actually, what you, they're going to take a lot of what you've done already and mush it into the format that Mass DOT wants to see so they can approve us to go to phase three of the program. Could we work with, could the subcommittee work with whoever the they is that you're talking about? Yeah, that's not a big deal. We just have to get to that point. Okay. Yeah, because the other option is we were going to bring someone in. It seems like it would still, if we could take it another step or two further, it still would be that much easier to, to use then. So it's still, if, I don't know, Chris, do you think there's any chance of getting a small um, bit of money to, to get some technical assistance from PC to finish up what we've been doing? It's possible. Um, I haven't seen their request come out this year, so I'll have to see what they're focusing on. They focus on different um, areas and um, so I don't know what their focus is this year. But I, I guess I was thinking that since they had already worked on the uh, bicycle and pedestrian plan, they might be willing to just put in a little bit extra to finish it. So, so um, has the uh, subcommittee met? Had it has the subcommittee had a chance to roll things along a little bit? Um, now, Tracy and I have been insanely the, uh, busy. Tracy yeah. and I have been insanely busy, but to, today marks the end of, well, tomorrow marks the end of the semester, so things open up a little bit, but we really do need, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we, do, you know, we do need some technical help to move forward, so we were, um, if you guys don't have directions to send us, we were going to sort of send out a query to people that, you know, in, in Tracy's world, as well as to our PBPC contact to see who we could get to help us. Yeah, because if, if we're going to be asking for uh, help on it, which I think is a great idea, um, I'd like to sort of to get it back to the, the full committee mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, you know, we can touch it before it goes right. off. And get, so, um, when do you think I mean, you might be ready? Honestly, Aaron, part of what I, I want to get it to you guys once we have enough detail to it to be able to show you like, here are some of the choices and here's how it would work. But I kind of, we kind of need technical assistance to be able to get to that step. So I don't know that it's, I mean, we can bring it back to you guys, but I think it's actually going to be more, your time is going to be more useful after the next step. Okay, well, let, let's, let's think about that. So, um, and also, I guess I'd be interested, um, Guilford is talking about that it has to be in a certain format to be submitted and approved by the state. So if there's some guidance on that, that would yeah, be helpful yeah. too. Um, well, I mean, I feel like, go ahead. The part you're doing now is like the front end of the plan. Mm -hmm. And then the part that they want in their format is actual projects and actual numbers and right. taking basically our sense. project list and making putting that into the sure, priority. That makes sense. So you, your so part is we're one making, piece. That's well, we're making the algorithm and um, right. they want the output of the algorithm. Yeah. Well, and at the subcommittee meetings, right, we have played with some of the scoring to see how different prior, different projects would score. Like, does it make sense to score some projects higher, some projects lower, right? Right, so, so that's yeah. what I want to do on a systematic basis, but with some technical help and then bring it to you guys. Here's, you know, what All we're right these different kinds of support. But that gets a, I mean, there is an agenda item tonight too about the pri priority projects. Oh, okay. Right, wherever that is, where'd I put? But I wanted to, uh, yeah, I did want to, I did want to get on to the um, um, looking at, at our project spreadsheet. I don't know if Guilford had a chance to pull up the, uh, the, that so that, so that we could all look at it again. And I, I noticed when I looked at it that, um, it pretty much stops last, a year ago. Yeah, it hasn't yeah. been updated. Well, um, and so, and I don't know that there have been many updates because really everything has been sort of held in abeyance for well since March, anyway. So, Tracy, 
I mean, I just have a question. I, I've raised it before, just in terms of like, I know sometimes the town manager gets emails from the public saying they're concerned about a certain intersection or, you know, something that it, they feel like needs improvement. And there's also that whatever click fix website. Yep. And I know some, I mean, some of those are very small, like here, this street sign is missing, but some of those are actually bigger projects. Like I'm concerned about the safety in my neighborhood. And so, also, this, I mean, is, is there, I mean, one of my questions is like this information is coming into all these different sources. Is there like one comprehensive list place where all of those requests? Oh, Tracy, you know, you know the answer to this. I, well, so, <laughs> it, but you're, you're in charge. But so, because uh, you were uh, saying it's like been a year, but obviously, like people have been, made requests in the last year. So, so, oh, one of the I reasons, can, oh, Aaron, if, yeah, one of the reasons that I'm so anxious about, um, getting the, the charts the next step is that uh, part of what we're trying to say in that is that yeah it come to us and then we'll, we'll get it on this list and it's going to go into a couple of different places on the list to be considered um no we're, that's not that's not okay and this is an immediate thing and and so so you know your point is well taken i i, I don't want to be I don't want but, to be too mean, but <laughs> no. But currently, doesn't Guilford house a list? I always feel like it's Guilford's list, and then he gives us part of. Yeah, the but it's been it's been inactive because of um, uh, because of the uncertainty about the role the TAC is to play in, in this new thing, and that's that's something that I'm hoping we're getting to the bottom of well, reasonably quickly. Um, so, and, and the reason that I want to put this on the on the agenda is understanding that it is not up to date and that we are not um, um, directly a part of it, but um, I hope we will be. In fact, nothing that we're doing tonight really is, is sanctioned yet. Um, I mean, we, there've been suggestions made and, and, and polite agreement that yeah, good idea if you keep on doing that. Um, and that's something I'm hoping we fix soon. In the meantime, to look at this stuff, to get it you know, out of the oven again, put it back on top of the stove so we can begin to, to, to think about it and work on it. Um, so there is, like I say, there's a lot of stuff missing because we have nothing since November on that list. Um, and even if it's been updated, um, I mean, if, even if there is, uh, there are updates that could be made to it, um, it really hasn't been our purview to, to get them. Although I'm, I'm asking, I'm hopeful that Guilford can do that for us so that we can catch up with things when the time comes. Um, I see him looking very constructively at his computer, maybe. Well, I, actually, Aaron, about to happen. Aaron, I think the speaking cat moved from you to Amber. So um, she, she had her hand up a while ago and the cat in the window as well, so. <laughs> Well, yes. Yeah, so on your committee website, the email address goes directly into your own inbox. So it does get filtered. People do respond to that. Um, and then anything from the town manager's office does come down to us. But just generally, since all this has started, even with C Click Fix, um, public interaction is down regarding traveling and I just think it's because nobody is so nobody is really seeing issues like they were but um yeah they're really I haven't seen anything come in through that TAC email to that inbox um things may have been sent from the town manager's office to Guilford, but I haven't seen anything come through my way and there really hasn't been any sort of issues that have come in through C click fix. But so it's I, just I a mean, quiet point right now. I mean, I, I guess I'm not surprised. So let me, let me let Kim go. Kim. I'll go, of course. <laughs> but she has to unmute. There you go. All right, yes. Um, I know, for example, I myself submitted a C click fix. Uh, several, at least a couple months ago, and I haven't heard anything about it at this committee. For example, that's direct knowledge of C, C click fix. Yeah, well, it depends what it would be for. I mean, not everything you enter gets sent up to here. 
right and and so that's one thing is that there's some things which um our our screeners amber and guilford may not bring to us because it's not appropriate and that's fine that's fine um but i know there's some other things rumbling around like uh, that actually may have gone away speed limits requests for here and there and, and stuff like that so let me finish with let me finish with kim first tracy yeah it's it my particular issue and i'm just bringing this up because of the context was a sidewalk issue so and the yeah, general... sidewalk repair kind of repair yeah. thing yeah that that i like i say if we got that I would expect us to sort of move it right along and say, Guilford, you take care of it. It's, it's a sidewalk. Get, get it into the... Now, a uh, part of what we had been doing, and I don't know how we want to roll this in the future, is, is to say, oh, there's a sidewalk that, that needs capital effort to repair. This is high on the priority, or this let's just shuffle this in along there. That's something that I hope would help Guilford. I mean, that's part of... In one of our roles that we're asking to do. Um, so, you know, sort of look, I guess that'd be like reviewing the paving list and saying, yes, this goes first. Um, Tracy. So I think, I mean, I just know that in my neighborhood or, you know, other people I've talked to have contacted the town manager, for example, like they'll send an email to the town manager and mention an issue they're concerned about. Um, and so, in, I mean, in, in those cases, right, the town manager, I mean, they'll forward me the response that they've received from a town manager or for somebody else in the town related to their concern, whether it's like speeding or, you know, a certain intersection or anything like that. And I mean, those, I've never seen anything forwarded to, from the town manager to the committee. And, and, I mean, I haven't, and I haven't been on the committee very long, and I don't know the extent to which like Guilford forwards stuff to the committee either, but as I've only been on the committee a few months and we weren't meeting, but since yeah. I've been on the committee, I've never seen any of those kind of forwards. Maybe they come to you, Aaron, but they yeah, haven't he, come he's, to me as a committee member. Yeah, he's pretty good about setting to me when, when, it's, when it needs to. Yes, Guilford, you are raising your hand. So, so, so this is your third meeting you've had since you had your break? And you, this committee, this committee's life was very much in jeopardy of not, because you're basically not gonna be here much longer and now you're trying to save yourself. So during that year of time when stuff was sent in, it never left and came to you because there was no committee meetings, there was no nothing going on. So there were things that have come in, there have things that have been taken care of. Um, I hate to say it this way, but um, the reason there's a sign on Amity Street, there wasn't planned to be a, a flashing driver feedback sign on Amity Street, but the reason was there was so much email going to the town manager's office, the police chief said, just put it there instead of where we were gonna put it. So um, that's the mode we're operating in now. So once you figure out how this committee is gonna help move things along, that, that would help us know where things are going. Um, so that's kind of where we are now. And that's kind of the way we've been operating at least since March or maybe a little, no, since March. Yeah, which is, which is yeah, I understand. And that, that's why a number of us grew anxious to start getting together again and showing the flag and saying, look, we're here, we're here to help. And the whole charge writing process is, you know, suggesting how we might fit into all of that. It's not like everything has stopped because we've stopped and and we appreciate the the signs for instance but um yeah we'd like to get going again kim well you know i understand that there's a pandemic but all of us are here ready to work and i assumed that the work wasn't happening because you know everyone was was you know trying to figure out the place but I also, you know, I also don't understand. I mean, our work is the same. Yes, the town governance has changed, but I don't understand why the thought is that our place in that governance has changed as well. I mean, they haven't told us anything and 
we haven't changed at all. And I feel like we are a very functional committee. So, so I, I, I kind of don't understand the, that your comment, Guilford, because, sure. because I feel like we have functioned very well. And, mm -hmm. and we also have a very specific, you know, we've been like looking at these issues. I thought, I thought at least part of our role was to try and help you like understand the my help guide the mire that is your like purview. And um, so, so I'm, I'm curious why you just made that comment. I'm sorry. Yeah, what do you Very see? What do you see that makes that it that way? Well, I, I can, I can answer that comment. Yes. I mean, the, the council doesn't really know how they want you to be interacting with them. And that's been the question. And they've been wondering how they want you to interact. But they, have, they also haven't done anything really <laughs> to yeah. change well, or to, to, to do, yeah. to change how, I mean, we only offer help. I don't understand. They, 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 um, they, they just have, they've been trying to figure out how to do it because they, some of them feel it's, and this is only what I'm getting, gleaning from yes. the fact I, I've, I've, this is what I'm gleaning from just their comments. Some of them feel that they're elected and they should have more of a say in how things are handled and they haven't figured out how to handle that, that situation. Yeah. And they feel like they don't have enough in, input to make things happen according to their agenda and what their needs are. That's kind of the feeling I have. All right, hold on. Christine is has her course. hand raised. Yeah, Christine. So I wanted to say that um, I think part of it is that we are now in a city form of government and city forms of government tend to have fewer committees. And so the town manager and the town council are trying to figure out how many of these committees are, still make sense, given the fact that the town council also has committees. And one of the town council committees is TSO town services and operations or something like that. And they seem to- Outreach, have, yeah. Oh, outreach, all right. So they seem to have um, the purview of the public way under their umbrella. And they're probably wondering, um, well, how do, how does our work, uh, you know, what, what are we going to take on? They're a relatively new committee, by the way. They just came into being sometime during the spring, I think, maybe in June or something like that when they did away with OCA and then they reorganize themselves. So TSO has been around for just a few months and they're trying to figure out exactly what is their role. And they seem to be getting more and more involved in things related to the public way. And they're probably saying, well, you know, do we still need the advisory committee or are we going to take over the work of that? And, and I think that's a conversation that's going on kind of in the upper levels, higher than my level, but um, I just wanted to kind of explain that. And so, you know, they're trying to figure it out, but it's, it's essentially like cities don't have this many committees. We have 60 something committees. How are we gonna sort through this and figure out the ones that we really need? Right, but you know, we're, we're three committees smushed together into one. So that's, that's really efficient. That's, uh, so Guilford that, then I might have a, a request as as um, a way to advertise, and and I want to sort of throw this out to the committee to, to get their ideas on it. That the uh, the projects list that we the, the prioritization that we're working through with the three tabs. If um, I, I don't know if there's a, if you could give us the the things that we've missed that are would are on it or would have been on it, um, so that we can include that in our um, arguments to uh, the TSO. So, so uh, and as far as sort of becoming reconstituted or reinstituted, um, the steps are um, to get through the charge, you know, as much as, as, as is useful um, and get, you know, Paul's sense of, you know, distance and direction and then go to the TSO and, and you know, pitch, you know, make our case. 
and then ultimately to the town council to make our case. So as part of making the case, I'm wondering if um, I think, and I'm, maybe I'm suggesting that that projects list, which um, has all kinds of you know things on it, like um, well annual paving, you know this sidewalk, that multi-use path, um, a bridge replacement. Um, yeah. Do you want me to share it? Intersections can can you? Yes, that would be great. Um, And there, there are two tabs on it. I have to learn how to do that, I, the, the sharing thing. It's a, I'm wondering if I have enough computer horsepower to do it. But. Um, I think I'd be of comment. Hey, hang on, Tracy. There you go. So these, this is basically a so the top two are done. Um, Hampton Road, the two Northampton Road and Belchertown Road are still in the planning process, but the date for uh, Northampton Road is correct. It's FY20. FY2022 20, is when it's actually going to be built. Um, North Pleasant and Pine Street intersection is just um, on hold. So, so it's the same with um, Sunderland Road. Station Road Bridge is actually moving along. And so, some action will be coming up on that. Yeah. So the uh, going back to the North Pleasant and Pine Street, um, are we going to put in the dirty light? That's in. That is in. That, that's uh, that's what that is. That's there. Okay. That's what's there. The ugly light. It, it's temporary light, is what we call it here. But I like the old terminology. Okay. So the bridge is going to be updated. State why? I think it's plenty bridge is there now. We don't need more. It's a great traffic calming thing. Um, so the bridge is the bridge project's moving forward. Um, we have a half million dollar grant. We're going to probably we've applied for another million, million something. Actually, a little less than a million, I guess, to get to the cost. If we get that, they'll, they'll replace the bridge. The two parking lots are on hold. North uh, Pleasant Ped upgrades is actually moving along, and we we'll probably have some construction next year. Um, West Street and Pomeroy intersection. This is the one that the Mass Works grant was awarded for. So that's going to move up. Um, East Pleasant, we're still kind of in the preliminary phases of East Pleasant's PED, PED surveys and all that. Um, the UMass project through UMass is still kind of on hold because they keep tearing the place up. Can I ask a question, Gilbert? Yep. Um, so a few a couple of years ago, we had put North Pleasant and East Pleasant as our two and one. Um, so I'm wondering why, how is it that North Pleasant has been able to move forward? Was there some money that was allocated or a lot of voices that came in on that one? And also I'm wondering why this survey hasn't started on East Pleasant. North Pleasant was a funded well before, that was well before you guys actually became the TAC. So that project's older. Um, East Pleasant Street, it's just a matter of time to do work and get things done is all it is. But It'll probably get surveyed shortly and move a little bit faster after that. May I ask a question? Oh, yes, Chris. So speaking of North Pleasant Street, I was um, I attended a presentation while it was at the planning board meeting last night where um, the Newman Center presented their new building to the planning board. And the new building is at the intersection of um, Massachusetts Avenue and North Pleasant Street and Thatcher Way. And their, um, their plan showed a roundabout uh, at the intersection of Massachusetts Avenue and North Pleasant Street. Is that something that is a town? Oh, I see that you have that here, right? Is that a town project or is that a UMass project? It's going to be a group project between the two of us. And if you look at the if you look at the um, UMass master plan, we convinced them to put a roundabout there instead of having the traffic signal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's going to be a, a joint project where we work on it together with um, yeah. UMass. Yes, and if it gets done in the next 10 years, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> does, does, does that mean that the new roundabout they're putting in was put at the wrong end of the street? 
No, they're they're putting one in at Fearing Street and University. At Drive. the bottom, it's not the top, right where this is, right? <clears throat> um, so, 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 Tracy, you're trying to get a word in edgewise. I, 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 I don't know if if it's if it's part of this this um, this piece of discussion. You've gone away, Tracy. Now she got she got fed up with me. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Guilford. So, I mean, this is the basic list. Um, the citizen requests are here, but they haven't been updated for 2020. Actually, there's one on for Amity Street from January. Um, um, and then this is this this tab here is more my tab versus um, the tab for the committee. It's just kind of a tracker. But this is a citizen's request. There's that many. Did you cover pot wine? I forgot to look out for pot wine. That was the other one we had put in our top tier list. Pot wine and West Street intersect. Yep. Uh, yep, yeah. Yeah, that's right. this one down okay. here. It's on the citizen requests. It's on 30, it's number 31 on the list. And you said it's concept, conceptual. So what does that mean? Oh, I see. I see your ones here. So, so, so you're saying that uh, North Pleasant pet upgrade was our number one in 2018, East Pleasant was our number one in 2019, and Pot One was our number one in 2020. That's what you're saying. Yes. Got it. Okay. So the um, there's a new request for speed limits on one, one of the Amherst Wood Roads. I can't remember which one. Is that, did that come in to you as, as an example of updates that might get onto this list? Not on this list. If anything, it'll just be in a request list and it'll kind of, it'll go in here and the request. And I see the, I think I, sh I, I remember there being a wildflower, specifically a wildflower, a request on wildflower, um, and I don't have to remember, I can look it up here. It's for but sidewalks. Said in July. Oh. So Kim, in a way, this is kind of what I, I think that we have to offer to the, 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 one of the things, one of the important thing we have to offer to the town council. Yeah, I agree, but you know, I also, uh, you know, one of the things that worries me is, is the column G on this graph is making these issues a district issue rather than a town issue. And like, I just have to say that because I feel like we are not like a partisan. I don't care whose district it's in, but I see that our town governance now cares about this. It makes me feel very uncomfortable, actually. Yeah, and um, so an update that we actually talked about making, but clearly hasn't gotten in, is that uh, we were gonna go with the location more than the district, uh, because there is some important, um, there's some important relationships between projects that are um, that are geographical rather than political, um, and just happen, you know, to be in one political entity or another. Um, I can't remember now. Now that you've brought that up, I'm, I'm trying to remember how we resolve that. Um, as an example, the um, the Pomeroy, um, is it Greenwich, Hot Wine and uh, Mill Lane uh, West Street intersections. They're, they fall in between two different districts, but they're really part of one issue. When you say South Amherst, you know, you realize, oh yeah, these are, they are connected in a way in that they're along the artery that, that is West Street. So um, that's, a good, that's a good point. Anyway, I, I, I would also like to add that I understand why there's, column G, and, um, but it makes me feel like 
you know, our, I feel like our committee has done a great job. We're not, we're not a partisan committee. We want what's best for the town. So anyway. So, so your point- I mean, and, That's and, a way of selling ourselves to our new yeah. governance. All right, that, that's, that's a good, okay. Well, um, we, we need to figure that out. Um, and like I say, I, I'd make an argument for maintaining uh, geography as part of it. Um, yes, Chris. Oh, I was waving to someone who was leaving. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh. And I need to take my leave of the meeting. I apologize for having to do this, but I'll catch up with everybody the next time around. Thank you. Oh, and Bernie, thank you for your, your um, uh, input into the charge. Um, I think I accepted them all just as they were. <laughs> That's the first. Anybody accepting any of the guys? Thank well, you. Ex except for the color of the font. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Bernie. Thank you. So, Bye. so we'll see you. Bye. Uh, I'm giving myself a second appearance of this so that I can see everybody and it. Um, so, so Guilford, on this list, how much, um, how much have we missed? Um, I think I mean, it's an interesting point that Chris makes, and 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 it it really sort of feels like it is the case that people have been hunkering down, and all that stuff that was sort of, you know, bubbling and churning um, got quiet for a while. Um, you know, the big the biggest thing. And, and that, I mean, speeds are starting to go up, even though traffic is down, people just don't want to abide by the rules. And that's the biggest thing people are complaining about right now. Yeah, that's a perennial complaint. So I heard a rumor that um, uh, the town council is being asked to reduce, and this is a perennial request, I think, uh, speed limits everywhere it's not it's not um the law doesn't allow you to reduce speed limits everywhere they're being asked to look at the 25 mile an hour congested rule and to vote to make any street that doesn't have a posted speed limit 25 miles an hour as a de facto speed limit instead of 30 that's what they're being asked to do yeah, we, we know the rule and we understand how that works because we've had that discussion over the years, but um, um, is, that, is that really going to happen? Are they really considering it? I think TSO will probably bring it up at some point, but TSO has many, many things it's talking about. Yeah, uh, one of which is the town-wide parking, I see. Uh, all right, um, so um, so I'd, I'd like to spend a little time with this and maybe figure out how to deal with column G. And uh, you know, thank you for updating us on the on the projects tab. Um, There's no column G. Don't worry about it. I I see, <laughs> I see that. <laughs> um, but but. Um, uh, I think we, we got to remember or make up new um, our geographical description that we were going to replace that with. Because I still I still think that's important, um, especially if we can figure out how to get it out of the political realm and into the geographical into the GIS realm. So. Um, So we, we did, you, you touched on, thank you for um, the reviewing what's happening on North Pleasant and East Pleasant Streets. Um, and that, that sounds like that's creeping along as it has been forever. Um, and so last but not least, I wanted to take another swing at, at the charge, which I sent around to everybody. Um, I'm, uh, less excited about it than I was two weeks ago because the next step seems to be having to go through Paul 
and I'm a little bit afraid of that, that um, we might get uh, far enough ahead that we spend a lot of effort that has to be undone when Paul finally figures out what it is he's going to have us do. This is going back to what Guilford was saying earlier. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if you've all had a chance to look at it. Um, the, um, I got comments from, from a bunch of you and did try to, to get them all folded in, like I said in my letter, um, me and the cat trying to figure out how to get that all edited. And- um, Did you happen to send that to me too? No, I didn't, Chris, because, you know, I just am forgetful. I'd be interested. And, and if you don't kick me in the shins every other week, you know, I'm just going to forget that, you know, that you even exist. So, so you, that's a good reason to come to the meetings. <laughs> um, I will send it to you, of course. <laughs> um, so um, maybe I'll, I'll let us all cogitate on that for until next time. Is that, is that what I'm interpreting by the, the nodding and the silence? The, uh, that sounds good. The, the well, next thing that I wanted to, oh Karen, yes, Steve. I mean, if we're all concerned about what Paul's gonna say, why not invite him to the committee meeting and ask him? I'm going to ask him and maybe that'll be part of it. And maybe he would ac accept that. So the, the, the reason that I haven't yet is as I was, you know, sitting down and trying to get the edits and, and talking around, I sort of the buzz I got. I realized that that we are getting way ahead of where they are, where he is, and um, that's a good idea. Um, which, which I think is a, a nice segue to to uh, what we can expect in our next meetings. Now, our next scheduled one, our next first and third is uh, December 3rd. Oh, okay, that's that's easy. Um, and I was going to, um, I w wanted to do a couple of things. Uh, well, I have a couple of suggestions to myself that I wanted to make to you all, which is that uh, I'm hopeful that we might have a chance to take a crack at the criteria matrix, which we talked about earlier. Um, I don't know, you know, Tracy, Bruce, and Eve, if you'll be ready to, to remind us or have something there to get us back up to speed on where that is. Um, and I understand that that it might be getting a little bit ahead of, of you know, where you want to be because you won't have had the, the technical support and the time to really massage things. But again, I wanted to get that back into sort of our active consideration. Um, and I, I don't know if you would be ready or want to, to consider on the third uh, presenting something, even if it's just the, um, the, the three slides that you had for us um, at the last meeting where we talked about this, which I know that was November a year ago. Um, and there were, there were a bunch of edits that you were taking away to do that might might be done to tidy it up in time for us. So that was one thing I wanted to do. The other is I wanted to invite Doug to come and talk to us, Doug Slaughter to come and talk mm -hmm. to us um, if you would want that. Um, I'm very curious, two things. I, I want to warm up that relationship again. And um, I'm really curious as to how the last year has affected them what their planning is for the next year when we're still in this situation. Um, he said, hopefully, hoping that there'll be enough vac vaccine around in two years that we're talking about something else besides pandemics. Um, Who is Doug ahead, Slaughter? Excuse me? Who is Doug Slaughter? Oh, I'm sorry. Doug Slaughter is the president. President? He's a board member. He's the Amherst board member for the He's a board, Amherst, yeah, he, he had been chair for a oh, while. Yeah. Okay, he, I remember. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not being yeah. familiar. Um, yeah, so I've, I've invited, if he's not the chair, he's been the, he was the chair of the, the Pioneer Valley Transportation Authority. Um, and he, um, a year ago, it's been that long, 
um, he did uh, uh, express interest in, you know, maintaining contact with us. And remember. Yes. I'm, I'm hopeful that um, we can do that now before we disappear into the holidays and as part of generating some interesting minutes. Um, so our next meeting is the third <clears throat> and is that right? Yeah. Um, and then after that, the 17th, and then we probably won't meet again until the new year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Tracy, wow. I'll email you about whether we can meet before then. Sure. Um, and Bruce, Bruce can come. <laughs> yeah, I said Tracy and Bruce. I couldn't hear. <laughs> That'd be fine. Um, we can get Francis back involved. We had a number yeah. of grad students, and uh, Francis they, was great. Could we get him back involved? That would be awesome. He's he's still around. Yeah. Sure, so, so. Um, is there anything else that anybody wants to toss on the table before I ask Bruce? to make a motion. Um, Tracy. Uh, quick. Tracy. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I just had a quick thing is that, I mean, in, you know, in terms of our relationship with the TSO and the council and so on. So, I mean, I was one of the people who had reached out to council members and so on when we weren't meeting because I had gotten that email from Guilford saying, well, you might not exist anymore. And when I had those conversations with, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm not part of many conversations that individual council members have and so on, but not a single council member that I talked to said that they wanted to get rid of the TAC, and most of them were shocked that the TAC had not met. Yeah. Um, and so it's come up at the TSO, like I know, Aaron, you went to the TSO and Eve and I attended some meetings. Um, and so I think, I mean, what I heard from TSO is that they're really busy. I mean, town services and outreach, right? That's not just about transportation. I mean, they're doing a lot of town services. Um, and as an advisory committee, we're just there to support the council and do the research that the council does. I mean, the, the council or the TSO do not really have time for. And the TSO members pretty unanimously seem to feel like they do not want that responsibility where they're researching policies and so on like that. I mean, and they're focused particularly on more like day-to-day -day type services because they well, also they also review all the, t the, ma the town manager's appointments and like all these other functions. Um, but it is, I mean, I would like us to go back to the TSO at some point and talk about like our relationship. I mean, there are some things that they're looking at which um, do have, you know, longer transportation implications, you know, for transportation overall in town. Like I noticed like today, actually the TSO is meeting at 4.30. And one of the things on their agenda was like a townwide parking policy. I mean, I don't know whether that's just like, you know, something kind of on the day-to-day -day services side in terms of like, these are meters and, you know, but if it's like, I mean, the parking could have like some bigger ramifications. And I know, for example, Guilford has brought us parking related topics before, such as when the town had wanted to ban um, parking on like the major streets like 24 seven, right? That you can't park on, you know, the streets that don't, they don't have- South Pleasant, West Street. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a whole bunch of them. So, I mean, the other thing too, is that while we weren't meeting, like the town adopted, the, the council adopted that public ways policy. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive policy. And, um, you know, I don't know if there's room, I mean, there's nothing mentioned in the public ways policy now for both like short term changes to the public way or longer term changes or like permanent road and sidewalk closures and so on where there's any consulting with committees. And I think right. that, that's, and that's so, an important, that's an important omission, I guess, uh, uh, that there are no committee and I don't know, but it was deliberate. Um, but I think it, it's, I mean, like what Guilford is, is, is saying is that right. they don't know not sure. and, and Chris, they don't know what to do with the committee. So I think it's only it's only 53, Chris. It's not quite 60. Um, but, I, you know, what to do with the, the, the dozens of committees that we have. Mm, sure. And um, so part of our work and, and your suggestion to go to the TSO is, is, is spot on is 
to explain to them, and it, it's kind of a weird role for an advisory committee to be in, which is to advise the people that are supposed to be advising on how they might get advice um, from us rather than the other way around. But that's that's that is a, a an irony which which um, keeps me up at night, and I'm happy to be tackling it. it sounds um, like an open-ended charge to me, right? <laughs> well, so and and this this is yeah exactly and and. Um, so um, th this is why I want to, to engage Paul. And uh, this is why, you know, the idea is to, to sort of continue rolling our projects along uh, as a demonstration of what we might be able to do. Um, I don't think this is futile. I think this is all very useful. And um, I might even suggest that it is at the town council's peril to put us aside permanently. Um, that would not go over well uh, in many quarters. And uh, just Tracy, one of the things that, that, that I'm working around is that there are two counselors who have been active, well, have been talking to me about, you know, making us go away. They've not been effective in convincing any of their colleagues as far as I can tell, but I know the sentiment is there, um, sort of beyond head scratching, what do we do with them? But really that, you know, they're, they're the sense is, is that we're imposing, we're, we're, we're one to take away some of their authority, some of their responsibility, which is not the case at all. Um, and that's part of, part of what, a part of, you know, how we've been trying to frame the discussion and process. So yes, thank you. It's a good, it's a good idea. It's a well, well taken and, and you bet we'll be in front of the TSO. I don't know if, if we will be there. I don't know. I'd love to bring all of us to it uh, instead of just, you know, you and me. Um, I think that would be pretty impressive. May I say something? Yes, please. So I wanted to respond to something Tracy said, which um, I think, you know, back in the spring when everything was shut down and um, Paul was trying to figure out, well, what can we let go ahead? What what do we absolutely need to right. go ahead? Absolutely. Um, we made the decision that um, only uh, permit granting uh, boards and committees would be meeting for a certain period of time. And that was because of town resources being pretty limited. And the IT department was very stretched thin trying to jump up and forth between all these meetings. So that's that was the reason why you initially you know, weren't allowed to meet for several months. Um, so I just wanted to share that. It wasn't that um, people back then thought that you were not useful. It was that they really were focusing on um, only the committees and boards that were permit granting. Of course. I mean, but I think that even, you know, once some of the other, I mean, I understand that completely. And it's amazing what the town has done. And it actually provides so much citizen access. Like the fact that people can sit at home and like, you know, be part of almost any meeting which you could never you used to have to go to town hall and sit there for i mean it is incredible and all the meetings are yeah. recorded and um i think but thank you, you know, amber the, but the questions came up just about you know when some of the other committees mm -hmm. so were meeting the ones that aren't permitting you know yeah. climate action had been meeting for like quite a few months and I mean, I think, you know, some on our, you know, on our email exchanges with each other, like the dog park committee, I mean, there were a number of committees meeting. And so it was just kind of, I mean, of course, I'm like, you know, obsessed with transportation because I do it professionally. And, but I mean, it just seemed like we were also important. And um, as Kim said, like, we've been here the whole time. Yeah. You know, we can, so, yeah, I mean, I, I you know. it, it, the point is well taken is that, that we're not doing permits and, and so that we were put on hiatus and, 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 um, <clears throat> Since then, I mean, clearly uh, we're being supported. There's, there's Gilbert, there's Chris, they're all helping Thank us you. out, do our thing. And, and for, you know, we understand that and appreciate that, that that's a real resource. And Amber. Uh, Thank you, Amber. Did I not say Amber? <laughs> Yay, and she's not in her car. Yeah. And you're not I, in her I, car. I missed the, Yay, I missed Amber. the drum set already. Um, so. um, any event, yes. So that this is, yeah, this is where we're, we're at. Um, and I think, I think it'll be okay. We're doing okay. Yes, uh, Kim. I make a motion that we um, are done for tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Thank you, Kim. Thank you all. Thank um, you, we'll Thanks, see you in a couple Aaron. of weeks. Um, further notes on, on any